Welcome, welcome, everyone to Jesus with TV, episode 264. Today is June 16th, 2016, and you guys who wish that I get well soon, you did not get your wish. I am as sick as ever. I feel awful, but I have a great attitude, so we're going to damper that a little bit with some Rook Endgames. Rook Endgames are like the bread and butter of awful, boring chess because they just go on forever, and eventually it's a draw, nothing ever happens. So we're going to practice some of those. It's good to be good at Rook Endgames because a lot of chess games degrade down to that so i have a challenge here but it's from it's just a chess game so i'm going to decline that because i want to actually start in the end game position so i'm going to go clear board where's that where's clear board i'm not very good at this stuff there we go and then let's put a king on with some pawns uh, we're going to actually start out in the end game and to make it slightly interesting i'm going to give a pawn majority to each side, <clears throat> something like that. Um, and then we'll, we'll give two rooks each, which is definitely different than one rook each, but makes things a little spicier. So let's continue from here, play with a friend. And uh, this looks great. So who wants to play an awful rook in game with me? We're not going to um, have a full episode today. It's gonna be short. So <clears throat> at least I hope it's short because I'm feeling short. So it should be interesting. Uh, hopefully we can get at least one complete end game. So I think, whoops, it's his turn. I think that king position in a king and pawn ending is very important. With rook end games, it's still important, but not extremely, extremely important because your king does get pushed around by rooks, especially when there's two uh, rooks on the board. But king position is still important. So you want to get your king to be active. The rook positioning is very, very important, however. Um, if your rooks are able to be aggressive, for example, on the seventh rank here, then they can eat up all those enemy pawns. Very um, useful position for the rooks. If they're defending a pawn, like what they're doing right now, very bad. And that can be the difference between a draw and a draw when it comes to rook end games. So as you can see, I've used my king a little bit. I'm going to prepare doubling my rooks on this file. I have a half open file against his pawn here. I think that's a bit better than what he's prepared, which is doubling behind his own pawns. But we'll see how it goes. I guess he has to push one square or pull a rook back. Neither of those is two. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, thank you for the four black squares. What is up? What is up? <clears throat> so he's offering some rook trades. I don't think I want that. Um, let's. So one idea is to check him and then trade one pair of rooks and then to drop down to the back rank here. He could of course counter that by dropping his rook to the back rank. I don't think I get any advantage from that. Another possibility is just to trade both rooks on this square, um, but I think that that wouldn't lead to any advantage either. I think I'm just gonna push this pawn there is no pawn majority after all, because if these pawns, well, if these pawns trade, then there will be. So I take that back. Taking with king would have been a big mistake. He simply checks me and then um, takes this rook, forcing my king back just to defend the rook. And that would be a, a bad outcome for me, having my king further back. In an end game like this, you want to, oh, it's my turn. You want to have your king active. That's an important part of the game. Sorry about that. I had to had to deal with my issues. I dealt with issues with tissues. I think uh, I would rather move my rook to one of these squares than trade, because I don't think I can win after trading. So I'll move here, and then I think I'll play g5. I'm not getting much of an advantage here. I think he's going to push his pawn one square. Yep, an interesting choice here. I'm going to try it. Um, it's definitely unusual. You don't usually get a position like this where the rooks are actually attacking things horizontally, but I'll take the opportunity. So now he's slightly defensive. I'm going to say that's good for me. So I could push this pawn and kind of open it up over here. I think that could be useful to get my king a bit more active. I think I'll do that. Very interesting. 
Um, so now I'll take with, now I need to take with rook. I need these two pawns to be together. Side by side pawns are very powerful because they do this. So they attack all four squares. Very nice wall that can be created there. Um, so if I captured with pawn, I'd have white square weaknesses. Maybe not that one, but just generally speaking. So I don't, once again, I don't think I'm getting any advantage from this. I'm hoping he pushes here so that my king can come in a little bit. It's, it's hard to win a rook and pawn ending. That's all I can say. Oh, that's going to help. That's going to help a lot. Um, besides not guarding a pawn, it's also a mistake to move your king back to the first rank. You know, what he's trying to do, of course, is defend this pawn uh, so that his rook is free to do other things. But um, <clears throat> because it's on the first rank, it's a bad choice. Simply because the rook is, let's see, this move, he pushes, and then this move, and he can't defend this pawn. That's my plan now. Simply because the king being way back there is uh, not able to participate in very much else. Centralized kings are useful because not only is it their good stuff in the center, but it doesn't take them very many moves to travel anywhere else. Only two moves to get here versus here. Um, so that's... That's actually the most important part of being active, is that you can be active in different directions easily. There's someone named Lonely Wolf in the chat. But if I say hi, then they won't be lonely anymore, so I'm not going to acknowledge them. I push this. Which, uh, this pawn is pinned, so which cap wins the pawn, I think. Yep, now I'm, I've got these guarded. So I've got four pawns to one. This seems like it's a sufficient, sufficient quantity of pawns. I should have a win here. This part's pretty boring. Would you like to resign? Let's find out. Um, I think this is kind of stupid. So I'll just play here. <laughs> He's like, yes. I love it. I love it. It's like, wow, I have a great idea for you, opponent. You know, maybe you should move your bishop. There. Oh, I know what you should do. You should resign. That was fantastic strategy by Chesswiz. Offering for your opponent to resign is not actually in the rule books. You can offer a draw, but there's no official offer for you to resign button. But I actually think that's, that'd be a great move. Um, I'm going to say well played, even though it was a little iffy. I think... Uh, Activity of the king and rook is, is what's really important here, and by moving his king back like this, he just lost some activity, and that's how it went downhill. Let's uh, click from position to get this position back again, and we'll give uh, some extra pawns here. Take off a pair of rooks and just play again. This time it's just going to be one rook each. Let's play a different opponent. I think this will be the last game, actually, because I'm feeling ill. But uh, this guy is pretty good, 1839. It definitely takes some work to get a, a rating that high. I'm going to push this pawn. It's not opposed by any pawn. This is actually a, a good rule of thumb in a king of pawn ending, is to move the pawn that's not opposed. And the reason is, if you have a pawn majority, like two pawns against one here, and you advance the, the the opposed pawn, then he can do that as well, and your pawns are locked up, but you can't take advantage of your extra pawn. So you should advance this one, and then he can't lock you up, and then as long as this one stays with the other one, then you can eventually break through and get a, a passed pawn. So advance the unopposed pawn is a good rule of thumb. There's not a lot of open lines for the rook, so I'm kind of not prioritizing it. I know if I move here, he'll just make it hard to do anything, so... Get yeah, kings. Kings and pawns are more important at the moment. Very soon, though, I'm going to switch my rook to somewhere better. I think right now. Because if I push this, he takes with check, I take, and then he takes the file. And that is the one open file, so I, I want to be the king of that file. No pun intended. Um, I, I'm going to push here. I'm also thinking about e4. He would do nothing. 
See, I feel like I have a better position because my king is on the third rank. His king is just on the second rank, so my king is more advanced. And that gives me a slight advantage, which means I'm going to be able to get a draw from him as opposed to him drawing with me that I can, I can force that draw with my better position. Uh, take take and, and king over, I guess, to try to take this file. So if I take, it opens up the D file. Do I want that? Um, post pushing is pretty tempting. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna play king over. So I have the first move to get this file. That's gonna be useful. If he tries to take it, I can kind of skewer him and trade rooks, which pushes his king back. Also, this shape maybe holds his pawns back a ways because he has to he has to make a lot of moves to get a pass pawn here. Uh, he can't just push this one, or then he's got to push this one as well, which slows him down. Here, I think I'll push. I could check first. Um, but I'll push first. I can always check now, which I will do. So I've got some good penetration points here. I can come to this square, and if he plays rook up instead, then I can come to this square. So either one of these two are some good targets. My rook is looking for activity at this point. Cause a little trouble. <clears throat> See how my rook is more active because it's on the open file? And his rook is nat. So that's pretty good for me. Um... I think I'll play there. That prevents his king from guarding. And then I'll play here. I really want to get my king in this way. This might be a mistake. This might not be the best play. It's not like I'm a grandmaster. In fact, I'm pretty bad at endings. That's why we're practicing them. Let's go back here. Eh. Not really sure what to do. I really want to advance my king, but I can't find a way in. What about rook here? This is this is good. This is good. I don't even think he can defend both. So now I've turned my active rook into an extra pawn, uh, which is the first step of winning. And now that I have an extra pawn, I can once again I can draw because that's all you can do in a rook in game. So this check's very powerful because he can't come this direction. Now he's trapped against the side of the board, which I'm happy about. <coughs> So I think uh, king over and this might be good, or just walk the king this way. I think the next thing to do is to do something with the king. I'm actually going to go this way, which is slow. The idea is I remove the defender of this pawn so that I can attack it at some point, because uh, this pawn's guarded by the rook. So I need a target that I can attack more easily. So I trade here, and then I can play this. And then it's going to be a race, because he's going to go like this at the same time, take this pawn. So here, rook g6, take, pawn, pawn, next, and then push. I think I'm going to win that race, and actually just promote first. Um, I'll check him again. So I give up on that. I, I, I'll do it later. <laughs> it's too scary right now. His rook's very passive, so I'll find a, a better way to win this. If I bring my king over here, then I don't have to give up this pawn. There we go. This feels at least same or better. Oh, this is a lot better. See how my king is here now? So I can, you know, be a pain to his pawns much more easily. Yeah, this ending is much better. So now I'll put, yeah, put this way, I think. His, his two pawns are actually, you know, in trouble. So this would be a pretty powerful move, blocking off his rook. I think it's much better than just taking this. 
because this past pawn is quite a threat now. And I end up winning. So you can win a rook and pawn ending. It's just not very common. Uh, if he takes, I take with pawn, actually. Because taking with king allows this. He can kind of push through. Now, I, I promote before he gets anything done. But, you know, uh, what, if I, what if I, you know, I got a headache and I didn't see that move. So he checks me. So he plays his rook back. Oh, he didn't. Okay, and then you have a problem. Rooks, as a general rule, belong behind past pawns. So this pawn is past. There's no enemy pawns that can stop it. So having my rook behind it here is very, very powerful. It's the best place for the rook. And that's what he tried to do. He just resigned in this position um, by playing the rook here. This is behind the past pawn. Fortunately, I was able to just you know chase him away with this move, very winning sort of move. But uh, the reason this is good is that it's always attacking the pawn, no matter how far it goes. The rooks will be able to do that in one move. So it's actually strong no matter whose rook or whose pawn it is. So his rook belongs behind my pass pawn, but my rook also belongs behind my pass pawn. So if there's ever a like an endgame with this pass pawn, it's like the whole endgame is centered around can this pawn advance and can this pawn promote, then the goal is to get your rook behind it uh, because that's the best spot. And the next best spot, if he can't get behind, in my opinion, is to the side uh, because then at least you have some range of movement. Uh, you can... I'm trying to draw cool arrows. There we go. You can... Uh, attack some of the board that way while while defending the pawn it can't advance but at least your rook is active and i would say the worst position is in front of it because your pawn comes up here and then you're stuck i mean you got your rook here and you got your pawn here and, and you can't move either one is the problem if you move the rook someone will take your pawn so it needs to stay there and guarding it and you, if you move the pawn they're going to hit you on the head with a large wooden object because you've just cheated probably their chair so because that's locked up it's hard to say with a straight face it's actually better to have the rook off to the side. Even though you can't push it very well, at least your rook is able to participate in the ending. So this was the right choice for both of us. Fortunately, I was winning, so it's better for me. I hope you enjoyed the super short episode. Next episode on Saturday, we're going to um, try something completely new. Completely new. You have to go to the website chesswiz.tv to find out exactly what it is. This has been Chesswiz TV. Thanks for watching.